extortion meaning I walk up to you and I say, if you don't bring a dollar to school tomorrow, you better not come. <laughs> then he jump up and beat me up and take my dollar. But no, being a parasite means I walk up to you and I say, oh, I ain't eating in four weeks. If you don't feed me, you know, give me a dollar, give me something for lunch. If you don't feed me, I'm gonna die. You know, that's bad. You know about them kind of people. But the third definition is what got me. Webster said, a tree, a stem or a branch originating from the lower part of the roots of a plant and usually developing rapidly at the expense of the plant. That's what I said. She said, what? You know, I said, Webster tripping. So I had to check out what he was talking about. This is what I found out. This is a tree. Don't laugh at my tree. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, check you out. This is a tree. I can't draw. I don't draw. I do other things. I don't draw. This part represents the roots of the tree that is down in the ground where the vitamins and the minerals and all the good stuff come from. This represents the trunk of the tree and off from the trunk of the tree is what you and I call a limb. It's what Webster calls a sucker because it has no direct connection with the ground where all the vitamins and minerals and the good stuff comes from so it has to suck its life from the trunk of the tree. Now, that's your neighborhood dope dealer. He don't know nobody in Peru, Colombia, Bolivia. He don't own no tractor trailer trucks. He don't own no planes. In America, which is an expanse 2,000 miles from the Canadian border to the Gulf of Mexico, 3,000 miles from the coast of California to New York, you can buy the drug of your choice 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, no problem. That's a lot of drugs moving around the country. And that ain't no guy riding around your neighborhood, driving a Mercedes Benz, talking about, yeah, I'm the man with the gold around his neck. That's a sucker. He being used, and he ain't going to end up with nothing. Why is he not going to end up with nothing? Let me tell you about that. On May the 22nd, 1981, I had a $100,000 house at 2400 Luluna Drive, right out there in Green Valley. On May the 22nd, 1981, they kicked in my door. They being the Metropolitan Police Department, the Henderson Police Department, the FBI, the Sparks, Nevada Police, and another agency called the IRS. You ever heard of the IRS? Woo, talking about some bad boys. Let me tell you what they did. They handcuffed me, they set me down on the couch, and they ran all through the house, but I noticed this one guy, he wasn't saying nothing to nobody, but nobody saying nothing to him. He was walking around writing stuff down. So after about an hour, he came to me, he introduced himself, gave me his business card, I had to grab it like this because I was handcuffed. And he said, hello, I'm from the IRS, and what I've just done is an itemized list of your property. He said, now I've gone through the house, you got three televisions, I figured they 500 apiece. You got three VCRs, I figured they $1,200 a piece. You got 20 suits back here, $500 a piece. Ran it all down after he finished. He said, I figured you got about $200,000 worth of property here. He said, is that right? I said, you counting? He said, yeah, I'm counting. He said, let me show you what else I got. He reached in his briefcase and came out with a piece of paper. He said, this is what you filed for taxes last year. And this says you made $10,000. He said, now what I want to know is, where did this other $190,000 worth of property come from? He said, don't even try it. Don't even try it. He said, because I'm going to tell you what we think. Not what we know, what we think. We think you bought this stuff with money you made from selling drugs. He said, so let me tell you what we're going to do. He said, since you're so young and you're in so much trouble, he said, because we got the FBI and Sparks and Henderson and Metro, they all want to talk to you when I'm finished. He said, we're going to do you a favor. The favor is we are going to take everything you got. Everything. He said, but now, we don't want to you know, seem like we're doing you wrong. If you think we took something we shouldn't have took, you get your lawyer and you send him down with the receipts showing that you paid for this with some legal money and we might give it back to you. He said, that's a might. 
He said, but I expect never to hear from you again. I said, no problem, home. <laughs> he said, but oh, God smiled with me when he going out the door. He said, oh, let me tell you something else, though. He said, what we are going to do while you're locked up, he said, we're going to see your mother and your father. And we're going to check their records to see if you bought them anything. And we're going to see your cousins. And we're going to see your brothers and your sisters. And then he pulled out my phone book. He said, look at this. This is your phone book. He said, we're going to check everybody in this phone book. We're going to do audits on them. And if they got anything we think you bought, we just going to take that. See, they take it. And then they say, prove we shouldn't have took it. That's the way they work. And they said, that money you got downtown in the safe deposit box, and in the other safe deposit box downtown, and in the safe deposit box in Valdosta, Florida, and the one in, in Miami, and the one in Michigan, he said, forget that. We've been there already. He said, and let me tell you something else, too. Whenever you finish doing how much time you got to do, because you're going to do some time, he said, we are going to watch you. And if you spend any money that you can't prove how you made it, we're going to come to see you again. See, that's what being on parole means. Every month, I have to go down on Bonanza to the parole department and fill out a piece of paper that says, I made this much money, I spent this much money, I saved this much money. And my parole officer says, I will be over your house tomorrow night. And he might come over tomorrow morning. And he drops in, he says, how you doing, man? Let me see what you got here. How you living? Yeah, how you doing? Let me check your drawers. What you got in here? That's being on parole. Now, that's the real. So when them guys tell you, man, you can make all this money, you might have to go do a little time and stuff like that. You know, you're a juvenile, you're underage, it's all right. But when you get out, you're going to be able to do this and that. Forget that, man. On that prison yard, I've seen too many 21-year-olds, 22-year-olds with boy told me, he said, I said, man, how much time you got? He said, I got two life sentences. Yeah. I said, what? I said, you mean to tell me if you died, you 22 now, you stay in here till you 75 years old and you die. And they could find out you was being reborn over at Desert Springs Hospital. They were going to pick you up and bring you back to the penitentiary for another life. <laughs> I said, oh boy, you got too much time for me. You know? And that's a shame. And he got it because he was riding with another guy who was going to see a guy who owed him $25 for some cocaine. $25. They got into an argument. The guy shot him. He just tried. The guy killed him, jumped back in the car. They riding off because he got the gun and this guy's how they both got the murder beef. So you got to look out for you. Now, Last point I want to make. Let's talk about gangs for a minute. Gangs are a natural thing. I got no problem with y'all getting together. Streetwise Alive is not devised to bust up your gangs. I got no problem with you getting together. I got a big problem with what you're getting together for. Because you don't know that the guys who are running that drug business making suckers out of you. So we're going to try to change that. Streetwise Live now has 6,000 members. Today you're going to get a chance to join up. We got some cards we're going to pass out. We got some pamphlets with memberships in them. You can fill them out and send them to me and join up. We are a financial and a connection network to back you in what you want to do. Now, at that meeting that I went to in 1976, What's going on today, that meeting had a, pro a profound effect on. Because back in the 70s and the 60s, see, it was always one or two guys in the city who were the big dope dealers. But they started busting these guys and telling them, we're going to give you 100 years, we're going to give you 200 years. And the guy said, man, I was snitch on my mama, you ain't going to give me all that time. <laughs> you know. So they said, we got to get a new distribution system. And they said, we already got it picked out. The new distribution system is called Youth Gangs. They said, we got four reasons why we want to use Youth Gangs. Reason number one, 
They already got territory staked out that they can deal the drugs in. They call it turf. They said reason number two, we can tell them if they're under, under 18, they get a little time, they don't have to do that much. And they can come out and we'll look out for them because we the family. Reason number three, they are definitely loyal for no good reason. You a law crip because you a crip. You a law blood because you a blood. You a law panoid because you a panoid. No good reason. And reason number four, you don't know what to do with the money. So it's going to be real easy for us to trick them back out of it. Now I want to tell you something. As a gang member, if somebody's approaching you to get in a gang, you ask them this. If you want to be my leader, if you want to be my leader, being a leader means you have some place to go, you got a way of getting there, you got a method of operation you're going to put in play once we get there, and hopefully we all going to come out fine. Where are we going? How are we going to get there? And what are we going to do when we get there? And if they can't answer that question for you, what does that make the person who's following somebody that don't know where they want to go? Huh? What that make? <laughs> Especially if somebody gonna tell you, here yeah, man, this, this guy made me mad because he tried to take my girlfriend. Put this gun in your belt and come on, we gonna go over here and deal with this. You know, fool, I ain't messing off my life for nobody. So if you want to deal with that, you go deal with that. I don't want to deal with that. We, in Streetwise Alive, are going to start a new program. We are going to start issuing to Streetwise Alive members a photo ID card. How many of you have seen the commercials where we ask uh, the public to support us for a building? We want a building of our own. Well, we have found the building. And we are working hard to see if we can't get in this building by New Year's Eve. All Streetwise members are going to be issued a photo ID card. As a Streetwise member, you will only be allowed to attend dances, concerts, lectures, meetings, if you have a photo ID card. What that's going to say is this. All the troublemakers, you're not welcome. You can go out there and act a fool in the street if you want to, but when you come in here, you ain't welcome here with that. It's going to let your parents know that when you come in and deal with us, you're safe. Because we got photo ID and information on everybody that's in here. So you don't have to worry about nobody walking in, talking about I'm bad, and we're going to tear this up. You ain't tearing up nothing. Nothing. That's over. And if we can institute it in the schools, it's over here too. So you go back and you tell your leaders in the street, because I've already told them, School district, if we hook this up, it's going to be neutral territory. I've already told them, so you ain't going to be telling them nothing new. But if you want to march out there on the Indian Springs yard or the Jean yard, if you want to do that with your life, it's your right. You have a right to be a damn fool if that's what you want to be. I ain't trying to change you from being that. Get busy. But for people who don't want to be bothered with that madness, they need to have a right not to have to be bothered with it. And we're going to take care of that. Now, if I can get you out to assist, we got some cards. If you're interested in what I'm talking about, I'd like you to fill out these cards. If y'all would just pass them out. If you want to join Streetwise Alive, take one of these cards and fill it out. Over here on the table, I got some applications. The applications will give you some information about Streetwise Alive. There's a membership form in here. There's a photo ID form in here. My office phone number is on here and the address. All you have to do is fill it out, mail it in, and then we're going to get busy. Now in closing, when you leave, we got some boxes on the tables over here. Just put the card in the box and then we got a street by, streetwise button for you. You can pick up the button on your way out. In the meanwhile, I like to do a song that's the Streetwise Alive theme song. You like rap? Let's see if we can get some rap in. This is coming out on a 